And I remember when I visited you, you were telling me something about the cork that you use a special type of cork that、um, mm. prevents the wine from、uh, ever becoming corked. Is that correct? Yes, it's a it's a DM.、Mm-hmm. Do you know the DM cork? No, I'm not familiar with this. I, I will send you. I will send you a link uh, uh, for a very interesting podcast about this. Okay, fantastic. And this I can put it on the show links as well at the bottom, so people can find out more. Mm, yeah, it's a very interesting. It's a it's a American podcaster who interview the、uh, the the engineer who is also the manager of this company.、Uh, just to give you an idea,、uh, they probably now sell.、Uh, they are they, this, with this technology, they are the number one on the market because、uh, yeah. But I will send you the link because it is extremely interesting to understand uh, uh, how they work. Yeah, for sure. I'm really curious and. Yeah, for for someone like that, and even like a lot of traditional wineries are using their corks now to to do to cork their wines. You know, there is、uh, things will change just because now we have the technology.、Uh, mm-hmm. I don't know, fifteen、uh, years ago, nobody、uh, sell、uh, salad already clean.、Uh, right now, who buy salad to clean? Everybody, we buy every day salad already clean and washed. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm old enough to remember where this doesn't exist. Today there is this、mm-hmm. technology, and、uh, if you see a、uh, factory who can pre- pre- prepare salad, you realize you at home you are never able to clean like this.、Uh, mm-hmm. Things change.、Uh, there is、yeah. new technology, new new research, new product,、uh, and、uh, you know the cork is extremely important because.、Uh, In in red wine,、uh, yeah, because cork, there is two kind of problem with the cork. One is、uh, the, the smell of cork, which is, is, is a bad. Okay, but even worse、uh, for sparkling is where when the cork uh, uh, leaves some dust, okay, into、mm. the wine. The dust, of course, is, is standing at the end of the, of the day. So in a red wine, it's not a problem. It can be also an advantage because in long term,、uh, in ten, fifteen years, the tannins can help to age. Also, in a quality white, but in a sparkling wine, this dust completely changes the flavor and the taste of the wine. So, and for a producer, it's a nightmare because sommelier doesn't recognize our cork. So the water is not faulty, but producer recognizes the wine. Is not clean like、uh, you remember, so it's、yes. the worst situation because maybe you are a, a, a lunch or dinner with a VIP guest.、Uh, you, you know that your, the bottle is not perfect,、uh, but it's not corked. You cannot complain. So it's、mm-hmm. uh, for for this point of view, it's a nightmare. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And with、you、this really technology, yeah, and with this technology, they find a solution and works very well. Oh, fantastic! Okay, I'm just seeing. And when it comes to producing French Cotta, what do you think is one of your your biggest challenges? Oh, the the main、uh, talking about wine making,、uh, mm-hmm. the the critical point is how you press the grape, because、uh, mm-hmm. in sparkling, it's、uh, the the wine making is completely the opposite than the red wine. When you produce a red wine, you must extract uh, uh, from the skin the color, from the, the tannins,、uh, and everything.、Uh, in sparkling, it's completely different. You must avoid the, 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 the tannins, the polyphenol from the skin and from the seed.、And、the only way to do this is to press in a gentle way the berry, okay, like you do with finger, 
the, the core we, we go outside first is the top quality, is the heart of the berry. If you continue to, to, to press, you will accept also the juice which is around the, the skin. But it's the second quality, le less interesting. It's extremely important to do this, uh, keep separate the three quality of juice, and manage it, you can manage different. Because the, the, the heart is to be the top quality, and it will be the quality uh, with uh, less polyphenol, uh, less tannins, it can age mm -hmm. very well. You can use for our serve to keep uh, 5, 10, 15 years. Uh, the, the part with uh, some uh, polyphenols in the skin, uh, it could be a wine uh, less elegant, with less acidity, and also uh, higher pH, and uh, will develop uh, quicker. So can be used for a, uh, for a cuvee to not to age too much. It's extremely important to manage these uh, pressures and how you manage your grape. Uh, starting when you cut to the grape and, and you press is a few hours, but you, you, have, you must take care of this aspect is it, because otherwise you, you lose the quality. If you don't manage in this way, uh, you blend the juice that is inside the berry. It's like when you blend the coffee milk, you get the cappuccino. But you never, uh, you can do, after this, you can do everything, but you never go back to coffee milk. Right. And, and uh, the, the, in this case, the, more, the, the elegant part is, is the milk, uh, and, you, you, and you have to keep the coffee uh, on the side. So that's and the main you, challenge. You press the grape so gently. Is there you, you must, machine? You must uh, machine, yes. You must have it by hand and put the grape in small cases in order to avoid crash during the transport. Right. And then we uh, put in a, in a press. Uh, mm -hmm. There is different kind of machine. There is the traditional champagne press, the Marmonier, okay, who mm -hmm. works very well. And also there is a press, a pneumatic, with uh, something, a hair, a press in a gentle way. We prefer this because you can also manage uh, the, the hair inside without oxygen. So you avoid the oxidation since the beginning and help you to keep uh, more flavor and as well uh, use less sulfite since the beginning. It's very interesting. Mm. Well, but it's amazing. It, it, it's very important. The main challenge in the vineyard today is the waiter. Uh, the it's last the waiter? years, yes, sun, uh, rain, uh, change. Uh, the, this global warming is, is changed mm -hmm. also in the vineyard. And you have a vintage like uh, 14 or 16, where you have rain uh, and freshness, and a vintage mm. like 15 and, uh, and 17, who are very dry and hot. So uh, different vintage, uh, different uh, uh, reserves, and uh, different wines. Of course, we are go we are going on the market right now. Uh, we are now we have uh, the vintage fifteen for the rosé, and because mm -hmm. it was uh, uh, sunny and dry, we have a perfect color. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, how Pinot Noir develop color is uh, so fruity, uh, and also uh, a beautiful uh, uh, nuance of uh, raspberry. Okay, and, and the flavor of a red fruit is very interesting. 2014 is more classic, more fresh, more northern style, okay. The color is more like uh, onion skin. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's not so... Uh, um, both are very interesting, but are completely different. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. And for us, it's not so easy to explain to customers why uh, the same wine from the same producer, from the same region, in two vintages mm -hmm. are so different. Yeah, but that's the thing. You also work with natural wine. It's always going to change depending on uh, your environment, right? It, you can't exactly... Okay, but the uh, challenges are always uh, new. Uh, Make it as close. In 17, we have uh, a big frost uh, in April, April 19. Mm -hmm. uh, and two years ago, we lose uh, 50% of grape. This never happens in the last 50 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it, the same was in Champagne and Chablis, and Chablis and other parts of uh, Europe. Uh, mm -hmm. Every year is a big challenge. Uh, we are so scared about this, but mm. we do our part, but we are too small to change. Uh, exactly. You can only do what you can.
So let me let me ask you, if you don't mind, would you be able to walk me through the um, the production of French Accorta? So the first mm-hmm. step is always to to press the grapes very lightly, and what happens after that normally? After the press, uh, we keep separate the three different quality of wine, and uh, mm-hmm. in uh, harvest, it's extremely important to keep separate uh, uh, by variety, by vineyard, by quality of wine. So this means. Uh, Right now, uh, before Christmas, uh, we have more than 70 different wines because the, the, the juice is already fermented and uh, yeast transforms, uh, of course, sugar in, in alcohol. Okay. The next step will be the blending before the tirage. So we, we have to blend, uh, uh, and the blending is very important because these few wines, like we have only one wine with single vineyard, but normally one is blended. For, for the non-vintage, we can use also uh, a cuvee, a blend from a previous vintage, which is interesting, especially right now because it is so different. And uh, in the non-vintage, it's important to keep the, the, the house style, okay? So when the reserve, older wine help us to keep the style of our, our, of our label. For the vintage wine, like the rosé we said before, Vintage for us is 100% from the vintage, so it's like mm-hmm. a picture of the vintage. So 2014 rosé can be uh, from a northern style, uh, and 2015 from more from a southern style, more more rich, more fruity, uh, different. But uh, at the end of the day, is the picture of the vintage is like this. Uh, when the blend is ready, we will bottle. Uh, in the bottle will be the bottle that you will arrive at the table and uh, we must add uh, 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 the condition in order to have the second fermentation in the bottle so it would be some sugar organic sugar mm-hmm. for us uh, and select it is completely natural and this mm-hmm. yeast in a bottle will do a second fermentation so the yeast eat the sugar produce again some alcohol but all the CO2 produced in this process will be in the bottle because the bottle is closed so uh, the pressure inside the bottle will arrive at six bar, okay? And when the, sh- the wine is dry, there is no, no sugar to it, uh, the yeast will go to sleep in the bottle. Mm-hmm. This process of second fermentation takes uh, six, eight weeks, less than two months, but we need to keep the, 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 the bottle aging uh, two to six years, depending on the way. Because mm-hmm. the aging for wine in, in, a, in a cellar with the yeast is a perfect condition to keep fresh and do a good evolution. Okay. Uh, after that, the wine uh, to be ready. We must remove this yeast because this sediment in the bottle it was important to produce the bubble and to keep fresh the wine. Uh, there is no way to filter. The only way to, to put out, so we do a remouage. So we shake the bottle uh, Turn the slowly bottles. in order yeah, in order to put uh, the sediment on the top. And then we do the disgorgement or the disgorgement. So we freeze the top of the bottle where there is the yeast. Uh, How do you freeze it? I've always been uh, curious the, about that. No, no, it's simple. It's like um, a table with a big hole. Then the inside yeah. there is a, li- a liquid with minus 20. Okay. It's extremely cold. And you put the bottle. And you just and dip the bottle in. Right. And, right, and okay. It, it will be, uh, you freeze in, in few minutes. Then right. you open the bottle, the pressure put out the ice with the sediment, and the wine is perfectly clean. Mm. But uh, you must uh, refill the bottle because you just uh, uh, yes. lose also some wine. It's, mm-hmm. And then uh, you can add the dosage if you want. So we normally use wine with very, no dosage or very, very dry. No? But mm. you, you can use some wine from a sister bottle or wine mm-hmm. from a reserve in, in the winery. And it can be also wine with sugar. Uh, so if it is not dosage, it's only wine. If it is dosage, it's some sugar. And sugar mm-hmm. for, uh, can be normally five, six gram. Uh, mm-hmm. And the sugar also balance the acidity. Uh, and then you put the cork and you clean up the bottle and you dress with the label, a capsule, etc. And uh, the disgorgement is an important moment because you wake up the bottle, and the bottle gets more oxygen. And, and disgorgement uh, is when you remove the yeast, right? 
Right. Yes. Right. Okay. That's why we always put in the back label the information about the disbursement because uh, yes. if you buy a bottle is not vintage, how you can know how uh, you can age the, the, the bottle. Uh, we always mm. say since uh, the disbursement, uh, you should open the bottle before five to ten years. It mm. depends uh, where you keep, uh, how good is your cellar, uh, the temperature, etc. Mm -hmm. But at, at least five years. Wow. Okay. It's a, it's a very long and amazing process. And it's, it, yeah, it also it sounds a little bit similar to, to how you would make champagne. Is that the same? Does French Accord and champagne follow the same method? The, the, yes. The, the method is a traditional method. Yes. Uh, yes. But of course, uh, champagne is also the name of the region and it's made only champagne. French Accord is another region. Uh, right. The difference we have, uh, we have a different uh, soil mm -hmm. from Champagne, of course different uh, sun because we are not of Italy and a different grape uh, because we have also mm -hmm. the Pinot Bianco. Right, exactly. And it's a very different product as well, like French Accordas for me have always been a bit more like buttery and a bit more fruity, yeah? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we normally have uh, more balanced wine, less acidity, more round. That's why we don't mm -hmm. need to add too much sugar. Add the dosage it can be very, very dry because it's more uh, rounder. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to French Ricotta, mm -hmm. uh, what, what would be like the best? Sorry, what I wanted to ask you was when it comes to French Ricotta, what would be like the ideal food to eat with it when you're drinking French Ricotta? I know we, we are in Italy. In Italy, in every in every place, there is a local wine, the local food. <laughs> yes. So uh, traditionally, French Quarter is two kind of uh, uh, food. Uh, if you are close to the lake, like we are, because we are close to the Lago Zeo, you can also yeah. enjoy with uh, uh, lake fish, mm -hmm. trote, San Marino, Pesico. If you can do appetizer, pasta, risotto, or fried. Mm -hmm. or, uh, uh, cooked in oven, uh, but we have also meat. Uh, here is Rovato, this is a, a famous meat market, uh, and this is Manzalolo di Rovato, which is something like a boiled beef uh, with uh, extra virgin olive oil. Okay, so beef and French ricotta go well together. Mm -hmm, of course. Well, okay, this is something I wouldn't normally think so because it's like you know, you think it's white wine, but it's sparkling. No, no, no. Uh, but of course, it depends on how you prepare. If you do barbecue with the barbecue sauce, it's better to open it than wine. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> if you do like a carpaccio, beef tartare, yes. uh, especially beef tartare. Beef tartare, it's not a good thing. It's a perfect thing. Absolutely. Mm. Fantastic. This is something I'd love to try. Beef tartare with some French ricotta. It sounds amazing. Okay, and we have a, just a few more questions I wanted to ask you. Do you have another about 10 minutes? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I wanted to ask you a little bit about um, your past, actually, when you first started. So you've got a, quite an amazing history. I mean, you've worn so many different hats. When you started, I remember reading how you, you began as a chef and then you went to becoming a sommelier. You worked in two of the <laughs> biggest Michelin restaurants, uh, both in Italy with uh, two great master chefs like Ezio Satin and Tony May. And then you ended up becoming a, a winemaker, Barone Pizzini, and also the president of the Fanchicotta Consortium. Like, um, Was any of these careers something that you planned or did they just happen? No. <laughs> no. I, I, I start uh, in a restaurant just because my, my cousin uh, did a culinary school uh, and did the same. Uh, and mm -hmm. uh, I have a possibility to work in the kitchen, to work uh, in, uh, on the floor, uh, to work as a sommelier. I also work as a, as a bartender uh, in Italy, in uh, Milano, in Imola, in New York City. So wow. I was... Uh, really open mind and so uh, enthusiastic about the new opportunities and new things. Uh, mm -hmm. I was uh, thirsty to, to learn uh, every day, to do something different, to do to, to, mm -hmm. to challenge. And I was really, really lucky to, to be, uh, uh, I would say, at the right place at the right time, really, really. Mm 
Mm -hmm. I mean, I work a lot. Eh? <laughs> That's for sure. Yeah, it sounds like it. Yeah. So, uh, without uh, check uh, the timing, uh, the watch. Uh, but I was really uh, uh, able to work with a chef like uh, Santino, Valentino Marcatilli. Uh, mm -hmm. Give me a beautiful, outstanding experience, really. Mm -hmm. uh, so lucky. And then uh, for uh, uh, going to open a restaurant uh, in Pizzini, as I told before, uh, the opportunity to start to produce wine. And again, uh, producing wine, meeting people, uh, always uh, uh, thinking myself uh, how we can do better, how we can change. Uh, I think if you uh, Say, okay, we are doing the best, uh, we are uh, nice people, we are happy. It, it's boring. Uh, so you work a lot to get, uh, to achieve uh, something. And when you get it, you are happy for one day. Uh, but the day after, you say, okay, how we can do better? Now? What's new? <laughs> what is the next step? That's completely important. No, but it's amazing. Like what you talk about, it's like the Japanese have a term for it. They call it the uh, Kaizen method. Where you take something, you improve it, take something and you improve it. Well. You know, uh, wine world, also restaurant world, has changed a lot in the last uh, 25 years. And uh, I really remember the quality of restaurant and also the quality of wine was completely different. Mm -hmm. Today there is an uh, amazing chef, uh, food, uh, also technology. I give the opportunity to keep uh, to 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 to, to save uh, the, the taste uh, of the fruit of the fish of the the meat uh, the texture and uh, it is something unbelievable and uh, the same uh, the same for wine uh, we we have uh, also machine and solution who help us uh, to do things uh, was never uh, able to think uh, 30 years ago. It's completely mm -hmm. different. And also, we have more knowledge. So at the end of the day, uh, um, I always believe uh, in order to get more natural product, uh, you must uh, know how it works uh, and have information. Research is always important. Natural wine is not just because you do wine like my grandfather used to do. Uh, I mean, you can, but it's not so interesting. Uh, it, mm -hmm. It's better to, to know how the process work, why uh, something happens, and uh, um, find a way to, to keep uh, the, the best quality. Because it's, uh, at the end of the day, when you uh, produce wine, the only thing you can do is to try to lose less as possible. Because when you have a good vintage, a good vineyard, a healthy grape, you have 100% of quality. When you cut the grape, Everything you do, you lose. You are losing something. Mm -hmm. The challenge is to lose less as possible. That's the challenge. But in order to lose less as possible, you must know what's happening. To be in time to do the, the right thing at the right time. That's extremely important. That's a fantastic answer. I've, I've never, I've never heard someone talk about winemaking in that way, where the idea is to actually lose as much as possible. I think that's. Um, well, it's really interesting. It's mind-boggling. And I also you, like what you, you said about... At the end of the day, it's very similar to, uh, to be a chef, to producing food. If you yeah. fish uh, a, a, a wild fish, okay, and uh, uh, you, are, you have this fish, it's so fresh, it's wild, it's beautiful color, and you have to prepare a dish. You don't, you don't need to add uh, uh, spice, uh, sauce, uh, something. You can just cut and do a, I don't know, a, um, you say, um, a raw carpaccio uh, because yes. the quality is so perfect. You, you don't need nothing. Okay? It's so pure and perfect. Uh, if the fish is, old, is getting older, you have it in the fridge uh, after three or four days, mm -hmm. you must add some spice, some sauce, <laughs> some mm -hmm. lemon, something, just to cover. <laughs> the taste is going to be bad. But when you have something uh, to, to keep the quality of the vineyard, that's, uh, that's mm. the real wine making. Uh, you uh, have to, to bring this taste in a glass, but where would it be different? This alcohol, uh, tannins, acidity, something different. 
but uh, uh, to keep uh, you have to match the cleanness but also the approach of uh, natural that's the big challenge but when you try you recognize the taste you say wow this is something good and you don't have to go to school to learn uh, to recognize uh, something good if it's good it's good <laughs> it's very easy that's a fantastic answer I, I you have that's a beautiful quote i have to remember that one i like that and what i wanted to ask you as well is uh, maybe just a few more questions to wrap up because i want to be respectful of your time what keeps you busy when you're when you're not working so much <laughs> good question i always work too much uh, yeah. Of course, when, when I, when I, uh, my, when I have time, my favorite uh, <laughs> things is to read the book. Uh, I, will, I always have my kids complaining with me when we go on holiday because I have uh, cases with my books. I need to read, uh, <laughs> I need to be alone and read the book because uh, only in the holiday or during some weekend, uh, I have uh, the, the, the mind clean and I have time to, 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 to read. This is nice. uh, what I really love to do. I, I know it's not sport. I know it's not uh, very so fancy, but uh, I love to have to be myself with a book. That's my and, best. <laughs> my best. Do you, do you have a, a favorite book that you would recommend? Just something that you personally like. Oh, there is many. Uh, I show the book I prefer this year because Please. I just. Uh, 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 get back to my friend. You know the chef Dan Barber? Uh, no, actually Dan Barber. No, I don't know him. La Cucina Bonaterra. Wow, okay, what this, is this? This is a translation in Italian. Check the yes. uh, Dan Barber. This is a, um, a chef from a, um, a restaurant uh, close to New York City, uh, mm -hmm. uh, Blue Hill Pharma. And uh, this is a book you must read. Trust me. Okay. Okay. <laughs> in English, for you in English, of course. Uh, yes. It's, it's a, it's the, for me, it's the book of last year. The, the, the best book of, I read last year. For my right. personal top of 2000, of last year. Uh, and, about and what did you like book? about it? Because uh, he, this chef uh, really uh, approached about sustainability. And uh, how a restaurant, especially a restaurant with a farm like they are, can be uh, sustainability and uh, think in a different way. If you're a restaurant, uh, you offer, I don't know, lobster or lamb. Uh, cannot, we don't have enough lamb, enough lobster for everybody. Yes. You must find a way to use something and uh, use everything. Mm. Not only the, the rack of the lamb, uh, use everything, use less meat and less fish, and help uh, uh, to, to keep biodiversity and keep uh, the, 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 the respect of the nature. It's, it's extremely important because uh, the future of quality food is not quality just for taste, it's the same for wine, but also quality for the approach or uh, 360 degrees approach uh, of uh, producing food or producing wine. That's extremely interesting. Well, amazing. That sounds, and, and it's perfect. Like what you just talk about is exactly in line with the philosophy for Barone Pizzini. We try. <laughs> it's not easy, but yeah. we try. Yeah, but it, it goes really well. And just two last questions I wanted to ask you. If, um, um, what do you think makes a successful restaurant to you? Uh, the, 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 the quality of service. Uh, great restaurant is not only, of course, the, the food has to be good. Of course, the wine selection has to be good. Uh, of course, uh, the whiskey selection has to be good. Uh, and of course, uh, the, the place has to be uh, pretty. Uh, that's, that's the standard. But uh, the real difference is where there is uh, um, 
someone who uh, hosts the guest uh, in an interesting way. Uh, uh, only really few people are, are able to do this. The, 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 the patron, the, how you know you say in English, patron, uh, the, the like owner the, or the maître, or maître, yeah. who must be a person um, able to understand uh, if the table is table, uh, just uh, a young couple or we want to talk uh, about the family, about the project, they just don't care about the uh, suggestion. Another table, uh, maybe they're talking about business. Uh, so you have to be to respect because the customer is there for, for to be quiet. Or the table who visits the restaurant to get an experience is really open to listen the suggestion. But uh, the experience in a great restaurant uh, starts since the beginning. Um, if you are outside the city, how you park uh, the car. Uh, uh, how is the entrance, uh, how is the light, uh, the, the music, uh, everything, the furniture, everything. Uh, it is not easy to find uh, everything perfect, but uh, uh, when you find it, you really realize you, you, you're happy because you feel uh, uh, to be part of something who is great. Uh, mm. Even if you just have a, a glass of sparkling water. Uh, but you recognize how they serve you a glass of San Pellegrino is something different than other place. So it's uh, our details and service are the key, but it's also the most difficult things. Mm. It's easier to buy a lobster and, and to put in a plate. Uh, uh, to get uh, the, the service, the perfect service is extremely cold. It's very difficult. And, and the same for wine. Uh, the quality of wine list, uh, the summary suggestion, uh, and uh, and uh, the quality of glass, the service, the temperature. You cannot serve a red wine at 25 degrees, uh, etc. Are all details, uh, uh, but are extremely important to get you the best experience we can have. And uh, I mean, if you are in a bistro in a trattoria, okay. Uh, but if you are an expensive restaurant, uh, top restaurant, uh, everything will be perfect. That's for sure. Mm. That's fantastic. And just to kind of close up, I wanted to ask you if you could invite anyone over to share a bottle of wine, who would you like to invite and what would you <laughs> drink with them? Uh, I will drink... Uh, uh, a 50 years old uh, bottle of Marsala Virgine. <laughs> because Marsala is underrated, but uh, the, Marsala, the vintage Marsala Virgine is uh, something unique. And uh, I would probably love uh, to share, I mean, it's not possible, but we are talking about <laughs> a, yes. a dream, to share this bottle with the, the Pope. <laughs> with the Pope? Because, uh, yeah, because his book about uh, uh, Laudato Si, written in 2015, uh, show mm. the approach about the planet. And uh, I don't know if you read this book, but you must read because it's Not something uh, extremely important. Because uh, mm. the, the most important people in the world are talking about uh, a religious uh, person. Uh, change uh, everything was written before and explain how we must take care about our planet uh, because it's a gift and uh, it's a gift who gives us life but it's a gift we are not respecting and this is something very stupid for us it doesn't matter if you are Catholic or Muslim or, or whatever uh, at the end of the day, uh, we have only one planet. <laughs> Doesn't okay. matter if you are in Russia, in Brazil, in Singapore, or in Canada, or in Europe. And uh, we should take care about this uh, as a gift. And uh, a gift we must uh, keep uh, for the next generation, for our kids and the next generation. That's, uh, that's the main point. Absolutely. It's beautiful. It's, it's interesting that you say this because every single person that I've interviewed so far, I think this would be episode number eight. Every single person without me even considering or planning it has said something similar to this. 
So it's, it's really, it's interesting how it's kind of flowed along, man. How important and powerful this message is. Thank you very, very much. Wow. Thank you. When you will visit us in Italy? I, I don't know. You, yes. <laughs> let me know when you plan to visit Italy, okay? Definitely, I will. And if anybody wanted to get in touch with you, how can they, what would be the best way? Barone Pizzini website, uh, send email to yes. info at buy attention. I will, uh, will, I will see. Okay, great. And just one last question, if you don't mind. Okay, last. Last question, I promise. What makes because you happy? Christmas time. Sorry? What makes you happy? Ah, <laughs> it's easy. <laughs> uh, when uh, when uh, uh, I feel uh, uh, I did something in the right way. Uh, mm. To make things in the a, in a, in a, in a, in a right way make me, makes me happy. It doesn't matter how much uh, effort uh, needs. That's uh, the, the, the best satisfaction for me. Perfect. Thank you very, very much for your time, Silvana. I really appreciate it. And I look Ciao. forward to seeing you again sometime soon. Thanks, guys. And if you like this episode, please share it with all your friends. Give it a like. And if you want to know about Baroni Pizzini, check on the show notes below for all the information. It's all right there. And see you in the next episode. Ciao, ciao. Ciao. Do do do.